Welcome to Monterey's Cooking Pisto Style. I'm John Pisto. Folks, today I'm gonna to do something real different, okay? We've been getting letters in from all over the country and people have been asking me to show some of my restaurants. So I thought I would. So today our show is gonna be based on the Whaling Station Prime Steaks and Seafood. Now, this restaurant doesn't open until five o'clock, so I thought I'd give you a behind the scenes look at a restaurant and show you what it looks like, number one, so I can show off some of my nice collection that I have, and then show you a couple of secrets, ways to make martinis, and then we're gonna show you some food. So as soon as my manager gets here, we're gonna go through, oh, here he is. Say hello to Kevin Phillips. Kevin, how you doing? Right. Kevin's gonna walk through with us and uh, show us around. Let's go. Well, Kev, you know, this building has a real, real interesting history. This, we researched it when we took it over, and it'll be 30 years in another few months. And I said, 30 years. So that makes me, I must have been about eight years old when I started. <laughs> I'm kidding. But we've been here going on 30 years. And when we took this over, we did a lot of research in the area. And this building was originally a Chinese grocery store. And upstairs was uh, um, these little rooms for rent for the uh, cannery workers. And we think Chinese also. And I know digging around here when we were putting in fence posts and stuff, we found opium bottles and very old uh, uh, milk bottles that had only two-digit numbers on it. Really interesting stuff. And I, you know, I really liked that. Kind of. But you know, this was really the, right in the middle of all the action when Steinbeck saw and wrote about. And I mean, we really feel like we're part of history here. I know people ask about the posters all the time, right? Yes, every night. OK, so I thought we'd maybe talk about the posters a little bit. This collection started roughly about 25 years ago, and I bought some guy that was going out of business, and he had some, and I bought them, and, and I've been collecting them ever since. Now, the beauty of these, are these are turn of the century posters, and some of them are done by very famous artists who have changed their name when they do the poster because they made the posters for pocket money. Okay, I know that this poster we just bought recently at a, at a poster uh, auction up in San Francisco, and this, I've been looking for this one, Look at the colors in it. Look at that. Look, I mean, it's incredible. This is a very famous artist, too. Camp Romain is, is fairly famous. There's not too many of those around now. But look how beautiful these are. The colors. These were done on, on, on stone, folks. On, on the stone, they carve them out. They rolled them. I mean, they're really, to me, works of art. The colors are incredible. We've got a Sandeman poster. Again, the colors. I know this one has become very, very collectible. Then we have some other ones that I had we ran out of posters at one point while we were building the, while we remodeled this restaurant, and I had an Italian painter walk through the door saying he needed to work in Italian. And I opened up my poster book and I says, can you paint this? And he says he could. So folks, some of these are frescoes. He painted them right on the wall out of the poster book. Can't even tell. I don't, God forbid if I have to ever leave this building, I hope I don't. But they're just beautiful. We also did one poster that says Pisto's Pasta, and I put that in because a lot of people come in, they say, where's John? And this way, I'm guaranteed to be here every night because then they say he's over there, and they point to the poster on the wall. So that works out. Then we did another big mural by a ch local Chinese artist and my love for mushroom, and you can see the Pacific Coast and Mon Monterey and Pebble Beach, and you see all the different types of, of mushrooms that are growing there. Okay, that's my poster collection. You know, Kevin, being that we're in the bar area, I thought it'd be uh, real interesting if you showed the folks how to make a real good martini. You know, there's nothing beats a martini before dinner if you're going to have a good steak. I mean, to me, that's that's almost religious. Okay? We're going to show you two martinis today. One is called the Hemingway, which is very, very interesting. It's named after Ernest, of course. And the other one is called the Hawthorne. 
which is named after an artist from the Big Sur area that has a very unusual, for me anyway, combination of um, gin and vodka to make a real nice martini too. So Kevin's going to show us, first one's going to be a Hemingway. Okay, yeah, in the Hemingway we're trying to get just the perfect amount of vermouth, so we just want to coat the ice. It's going to coat the ice, right? I'm going to drain it, drain all of the vermouth off. Now that's a nice concept, Kevin. Then we'll add our gin, in this case you're using a good quality gin, this is a beef eater. Yeah, for a steakhouse, makes sense. We're going to give it a good stir rather than shaking. We don't want to break the ice up. Mm. We've also chilled our glass. Okay. Whoa. In this case, we're garnishing with two nice large olives. Now, I'll guarantee you drink this. <laughs> Boom! It's going to open up the appetite. What did you think? Absolutely. <laughs> and now for the Hawthorne. Okay, In this Hawthorne. case, we we'll do one part Bombay Sapphire Gin and two parts Kettle One Vodka. All right. Now, you know what I discovered with drinking these? I mean, if you like a drink that has no taste to it, believe me, this does not, this, I mean, it's like drinking a nice ice water with some saltiness to it. But man, does this open up the appetite? I mean, really, just boom. In the chilled glass. Mm -hmm. this, one out. Mm -hmm. this one we well, garnish with a nice big olive and an onion. Okay. Oh, good one. All right. Okay. So, if you want to make the perfect before dinner drinks, you've just been taught by the master. Before we go on, I have to show you this. Okay. These are truffles in Spanish brandy. Now, a few years back, I had some Spanish brandy and I had some truffles. And I put them together and I let it sit for a year and now we serve it as a after dinner drink. Now, let me show you. There are truffles, folks. Here they are. Look at that. That one's worth about $150, okay? Now, we discovered that this is an aphrodisiac. That's right. Now let me tell you, I won't drink any now, <laughs> but this is incredible. No one else makes this in the world, believe me, okay? You know, what's a real steakhouse without a life tank? Now let me show you these guys. Oh boy, oh boy. Well, whoa! Well, <laughs> what I, uh, Okay, let me show you these guys. Now, can you see him? Okay, here he is. I'm gonna show you real quick. Okay, that's that's a small one. All right, the other, the, I'm not going down there for, for the other one, believe me. But hey, I tell you, I could eat one of those, no problem. Nice, fresh Maine lobster. Okay, let's go on. Now, this is the nuts and bolts, and this is the real McCoy. Folks, look at this beef, okay? Look at the marbling. Now, USDA Prime has a very small category. It took me two years of tasting, negotiating, working with different companies until I found one meat packer that would do exactly what I wanted, okay? And the results are these steaks here. I can say, honestly, we serve the finest steaks in the world. I mean, in the world. I mean, I have some comment cards. I mean, best steaks I ever had in my life. Uh, should open a restaurant in Las Vegas. Uh, maybe the best steak we ever had. I mean, this happens to us every night, unsolicited, honest. I mean, look at, the, this is a porterhouse. Look at the marbling in this. This is a New York steak that still has the bones called the Kansas City. Look at this. This thing will cut like butter. 
uh, look at our New York. And I've tried them, and I've tried them around here, I've tried them in Monterey, I've tried them in San Francisco, I've tried markets, I put them side by side by my steak, we come out without any doubt at all. Look at, here's our, look at this, this is our, our man-sized steak. Look at the size of that sucker. Isn't that something? Or our fillets. Well, I can do a lot of talking, but now it's time to really put my money where my mouth is. Okay, so let's go outside and let me show you what the Whaling Station is all about, okay? okay? Here's a representation of some of our dishes, okay? Our appetizer, I think one of our best ones is the oysters. Now, the oysters are hand-selected for us. Look at the size of these guys. I mean, these are big oysters, none of those little beauty ones. These are real oysters. Then we've got hand-tossed Caesar salads. And Kevin's making that for us. And you see what we use, the hearts. We don't use the green. These are the hearts. I mean, it's real quality. I, I know sometimes back east, it's hard to get good romaine, but we're lucky being here in California. We always have great romaine, all right? Kevin, you can sit down now. Here also is another real popular one. And I, and I put this on the menu for a definite reason. Iceberg always gets a bum rap. We put it on the menu. We give you like a big chunk of iceberg and we make real Roquefort dressing. It's the real stuff. This is real popular. Just delicious. One of my favorites. Then we do, look at the tomatoes. Sliced tomatoes with mozzarella. And these anchovies we cure ourselves. And here's David with the other appetizer. Come on in and sit down, Dave. Now, you know, this David Stember, David Stember has been with me now, is it 15 or oh, 16 15 years? years? 15 years, okay. He started when he was eight years old here. <laughs> uh, almost. <laughs> About uh, 17. Okay. <laughs> this is fresh Monterey Bay anchovies, and it's done with, with uh, uh, like a tomato salsa, but a lot of garlic in it. I mean, bleh. and I mean, right here from the bay. It's absolutely delicious. Okay, next, folks, I want to show you what we do with fish. Now, you know, okay, boys, come up, bring it in, lay them down here. So then I'm going to explain what we have. Thanks, David. David, you can sit with us. This is Mario. Say hi, Mario. Hi. Now, you may have recognized Mario. He works with us on our uh, on the cooking show also at the house. This is Bill, our other manager. Hello. Hi, Bill. Okay. Now, this restaurant when we started 30 years ago started as a seafood restaurant you know and we went into steaks because I could not find a decent steak in this town so I made a steakhouse but we also serve fish now chipino is a stew here it is right here clams mussels scallops prawn tomato sauce uh, nice rich spicy we could we put some sausage in here a Cajun sausage good cake I mean boom bingo Fresh salmon, all our fish are always fresh, nothing frozen, Look at beautiful fresh vegetables, swordfish, the salmon swordfish. David, what's this one? This is halibut. Okay. With a sauteed fennel underneath and the nage. Mm -hmm. And we're decorating that with the little uh, uh, yams. It's a sweet potato mm -hmm. fries. Okay. And over here we have, look at this, this is ahi tuna. You think, now I mean, everyone, when I say tuna, you're thinking of tuna in the can, chicken in the sea, nope. West Coast, we eat it. Look at this; it's rare, still jumping, and and we're doing this with vegetables to make it look like pasta. I mean, all oh, kind of unusual. So we, you know, we have other stuff besides steaks here. Okay, now I'm going to show you my, this is my, my hobby, my, <laughs> the thing I do on my time off, and that's hot mushrooms. We'll bring the rest in, Mario. Okay. And, okay, what we've got here is a ragu, which is like a stew of, we're using at least five, six different kinds of wild mushrooms. All right. And we've got porcini in here. We've got craterellis or black trumpet. Uh, We've got, help me out, David, candy, candy caps, morel, shiitake. shiitake, well, shiitake is not wild. Chanterelle. Uh, chanterelle, and the chanterelle 
Okay, and then whatever else we've got around, whatever else is around, really. Okay, then we have gnocchi, and what we do with the gnocchi, you know, there's the potato dumpling. We have it in a rich sauce made of butter. Yes, butter, <laughs> <laughs> butter and cream and and, a, and vegetable stock also. It's called a naj. It's delicious. And what I do is I shave these truffles. Okay, this is a white truffle. They're from Oregon, and um, very, very expensive. In Italy, this is this year. These went for two thousand dollars a pound. That's right, a pound. They had a very short season. They were very, very bad season. Okay, and this gets shaved all over that. And the next one is candy caps. Now, candy caps is a mushroom that tastes like. Um, Maple syrup. maple syrup, and it's got this incredible flavor. And look at the size of the scallops. These are beautiful scallops. We wrap them in punch up. Okay, come on in, boys. This is what I've been waiting for. Oh, man. Look at this. One, two, and Mario, bring in the big daddy. There it is, folks. Thank you, boys. Here we have rib steak. Look at this. And I like it charred rare. We use our seasoning on it. Mashed potatoes with lots of garlic and butter in it. And we use fresh spinach, of course, and a couple of potato ears. And these are French fried onion rings. Look at the New York, how nice it cooks up. And then we have, look at this double baked potato with pancetta and sour cream and onions. And, well, are you hungry yet? Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, <laughs> uh, these are this is our steak presentation. And now, if you're a meat eater, I don't know anybody can pass this up. And like I said, this is the finest meat in the world. How we keep hearing that over and over and over. Okay, let's go. Now, can we are we allowed to taste this one? Can we taste this one? Come on, let's let's get that guy over here. Kevin, jump jump right in. We just I just got to show you how juicy this steak is. Look at that. We have real steak knives too, folks. Now look at this. Now look how that cooks up. Mmm. Mmm. Well, you know, we have, of course, a very, very large wine list. And, you know, Monterey County has it's over 32 32 to 34 uh, different wineries. Of course, we like to favor our own, our neighbors, and who make very, very delicious wines, by the way. But we've got Napa Valley, we even got French wines, we got some Spanish wines, Australian. Uh, I mean, the full, full gamut, you know, whatever, whatever you like. Uh, some very rare ones. We got some, look at this 1980 Opus One. Look at the Silver Oaks. Of course, Lockwood, this is Monterey County as is Shalom, Morgan, Monterey, too. So you have to have a great wine list to have a great steakhouse. Okay, okay let's bring out the desserts, boys. Now, again, this is just a representation. These are some of the desserts we got. Oh, my, my, oh, my, 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 my. Okay, thanks, guys. And what else we got? Okay, this is the pride and joy of Central Coast. Okay, let me show you what we got here first. Strawberry shortcake, look at our strawberry uh, sauce with our cheesecake. Look how nice and thick that is. What would be a great steakhouse? What's a great steakhouse without a good cheesecake? All right, gotta have mm -hmm. it. Creme brulee. Kevin, what's this one? It's our chocolate decadence. Wow, that's, that, that'll get you. Then, look what we got here. These are long stem berries. You know, these berries were pioneered here about maybe 25 miles away from from here back uh, geez, a number of years ago. And I've seen them three times the size of this. Later on, this is just starting to get away, uh, just starting to get underway here. These, of course, are Driscoll stra uh, strawberries. Look at this. See something? Wonderful. Beautiful. Well, folks, I hope you have got an idea now about what my waiting station restaurant is all about. And uh, uh, thank you for the opportunity to sh let me show you and show off to you what uh, these restaurants are about. Let me add too, Kevin, you know as well as I do that 
Our competition is very keen here in Monterey, Pacific Grove and Carmel. We got to stay on our toes just to, you know, to keep up with everybody. Uh, there's many, many fine restaurants in Monterey. Um, so I'll, uh, I'm going to go back and get that steak. <laughs> we're going to maybe taste one or two of these wines. So thanks for tuning in. Okay, keep watching.